Welcome to another procedural texturing tutorial. In this one, we're going to be having a look at hiding tiling artifacts. And more than just tiling artifacts, we're going to be making a node group that lets you use any image texture, regardless of whether it's been set up as seamless to be an infinitely tiling texture. So if you've got, for example, this image here, which is just an image of the floor, this has not been set up to be tileable. As you can see, it's darker on one side than the other. If we increase the scaling here, you can see that it's tiled horribly. If we have a look at what we're going to make today, and we take our hide seam slider and we increase this suddenly we've got a texture that is going to let us hide any seams of any texture if we use this image which is set up to be seamless there is still the issue of once you go larger than two since you reach three or five your eye is going to pick up this horrible tiling if we use our node group we don't need to hide seams because there are no seams in this texture but we can do all sorts of things that are going to hide the repetition hide the artifacts and we can increase this scale to any size so i think this one's going to be useful let's get stuck in we're going to be using blender 2.0 82. And before anything else, go edit preferences, add-ons, and make sure that the node wrangler add-on is enabled. Go to my texturing workspace, add a plane. This is going to give us a little viewer to see what we're doing. We are going to be starting with an input UV map. So this is just going to be our general coordinates. And then in front of that, we are going to add a texture, Voronoi texture. I'm going to first of all set this to 4D because I'm going to want this seed value here. And we're going to be using the position. And the position basically tells us where the the center of each one of these shapes is. If we take a converter vector map and we take our UV coordinates into the top and we change this to subtract, you can see that we've got a zero zero point contained within every single one of these spaces. Some of them are more blue than others because our position is taking Z into consideration. We can ignore this though because UV coordinates and image mapping does not consider the Z distance. So if we were to take the subtract node and plug it straight into our text that has seams in it. You can see that what we're getting is on that zero zero point, we're getting a seam smack bang in the middle of every single one of our shapes. We don't want this to happen. We would like our seam to occur outside the shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to translate this with a mapping node. So shift A, vector mapping. We're in point. And if I increase the location, then we're going to move this outside. What we're actually going to do is we're going to change the scale of our Voronoi to one. We're going to go shift right click over our noodles here. And we're going to go shift A, converter vector math. And we're going to put a scale in front. So what this is going to let us do is every part of our node tree is going to be scaled at the same time. So if I just set this to five, then we have our space back. So this is the same as having the Voronoi set to five, but as we add more nodes here, we want them all to scale together. So now rather than 0 0.2, because we have a scale of one, I'm going to change this to 0.5 for my translation, and that is more or less going to shift things out our scale now. The 0, 0 point, the original 0, 0 point, is now in the center of our UV space. This is important because now we can use the scale value to push the seams outside our tiles. So for example, if I now plug this into our image texture, you can see where we have our edges. If I just reduce this, and it's going to push that edge outside. So immediately we've dealt with a lot of that issue of tiling. So that's exciting. Let's put this onto a bit of a slider just so it's less of a hassle. I'm going to go invert and I'm just going to plug that straight into that scale. We've already done away with a lot of our tiling issue just by breaking up the position that we're repeating at. But let's say for example that we drop our randomness. Now you can see that we've gone back to a square grid. In this texture we have these horizontal bars. I want to have a way to rotate these tiles at random. So I'm going to introduce a new node here and it's going to be the converter map range. Map range allows us to take an input, describe the minimum and maximum range of that input, and then output a new scaled output. We're just going to be using linear. We're going to turn off clamp, and on the Voronoi node, we're going to take this color. We're going to plug that in. But straight away, we can see that it's gone black and white. Outputting 0 to 1. If I just increase this to 0.1, you can see that our darkest ones have gone to black. We don't want to go too high because we're going to lose too many of our values. I'm just going to go to 0.1 on the bottom, and equally at the top, we're going to go to 0.9. We want to be able to rotate our tiles between 0 and 360 degrees so that we get the full range of rotation. In this mapping node, because we want to be just using the Z rotation, we're going to be using a converter combine X, Y, Z. When I plug this into the rotation, what we have is radians. 360 degrees is 2 pi radians, so I need to change this max value to 2 multiplied by pi. 
now we have a random color per cell being converted to a range of 0 to 2 pi. Put this into the Z of our combined XYZ. If I do control H, that's going to hide the other two. This is plugged into the rotation of our mapping node. And now if I mute the mapping node, you can see that we've got our bars. And if I bring it back and you can see that our tiles have been rotated by some random amount. Combine that with the fact that we're not using a grid pattern to tile our texture anymore. We're losing a lot of our issues with tiling. If we go back to our texture, which is not seamless, the photo of the grass. If I reduce this, then we get an almost completely seamless texture already. But when we zoom in, you can see that we have these straight divides between the cells. We want to adjust this and we're going to do it with linear lights and noise textures. So I'm just going to move this back. Everything comes out of our scale. Remember that because our scale is going to be what is controlling the scale of our entire texture. So I'm going to add a texture, a noise texture, plug this into the vector. Because we're using UV, we can change from 3D to 2D because we don't need to have the Z in any computation. So it's just going to make our texture a bit lighter here. And we're going to add a color mix RGB. We're going to drop our mix onto the input to our Voronoi texture. And we're going to change it from mix to linear light. So linear light is going to let us affect the coordinates without actually shifting them in any direction. Overall, it's just going to push equally in both directions. So we can just take our color here into the color of our linear light. And you can see that we're taking those square edges and we are bending them. To make things lighter still, I'm going to drop my detail. And for this noise texture, I'm actually going to drop it to three. Looks good to me. Now I'm going to move this back and I'm going to take our linear light shift D to duplicate and I'm going to drop it on in front. I'm going to take my noise texture and I'm going to do control shift D to duplicate it with the input. And I'm going to take the color and I'm going to drop that into this second linear light. And this time we're going to change the scale from three to 50. Now when I increase this, you can see that we're getting a much finer blend across that edge. And if we increase it to 500, we get very fine airbrush kind of spray. And if I increase it to 5000, then we have an imperceptible blur in between the two cells here. What does this mean for our texture? Well, where we have an edge like here, as soon as we increase that blend, you lose that edge. In some textures, however, it does make more sense to have this kind of lower scale value and it pushes things one way or other. You can see that we've got that edge, but it's pretty much hidden there. And if we increase the first linear light, then we're also bending the edge. So this is looking good. This is the nice, easy way to make a completely untiling texture. It doesn't actually take too many nodes. It's not too much theory. Let's just drop all of this into a group node. So select it all, control G. We had a noodle coming out, so that's automatically connected to the output. First thing as usual is connect our vector. I'm going to delete from the inside and I'm going to add UV map to the outside. I'm going to rename our group node untiling. Let's start connecting things up. We've got scale. We've got our first linear light and press N to bring up our side panel. I'm going to change the name of this from fact to edge wobble. This is just our general larger scale noise. We're going to connect the second linear light. Rename this one from fact to edge blend. Now I do actually want to do something to the scale of our second one here because it's nice to have it at 50 but in some textures it's really nice to have it at 5000 if you want that really fine blend between. Sometimes it's more appropriate. So if we want it to be at 50 but also 500 but also 5000 that's a pretty big range. I could just connect this directly and set that on the front. But I think it's nicer to have a slider so I am going to just add a color invert, connect up that fact and I'm going to delete the invert. I can rename this fact to be blend scale 50. We can say this the same as taking a multiply 5 times 10 and 500, 5 times 100 and 5000, 5 times 1000, 10, 100 and 1000. They are the same as 10 to the power of 1, 10 to the power of 2 and 10 to the power of 3. So if I take this and I plug the value into that multiply and if we take our blend scale we plug this into the bottom of our power node here and we change these minimum and maximum values to be 1 to 3. So now our blend scale is going to tell us whether we want 10 or 100 or 1000 times 5. There we go, we can plug that in there. So if I just drop this scale to 5 so that we can have a look here and I drop the edge wobble and I drop the edge blend. Have a zoom and find ourselves an edge. When we look at this edge blend here, if I increase this then we're going to be able to get to a fine airbrush at 2 and then at 3 we're going to have an imperceptible blur in between the two cells and that's just on a nice 1, 2, 3 slider. The next thing that we want is to be able to control the scale for our edge hiding. Basically this invert node here which controls the scale. So at a scale of 1 we have all of these additional edges and as we drop this we hide all of those issues with the tiling. So I'm going to connect from our transparent socket to the fact our invert. Now I could just remove the invert now and we'd have a slider on the front but I actually want the slider to work up upside down. If I rename the fact to hide seams, then it would make sense that zero hiding seams is going to show all of the seams. Whereas at the moment, if we go to zero hide seams, then it's going to scale everything to zero, right? So if I change this color to be white, now our factor is working upside down. So now as we increase our hide seams, 
we are hiding the seams more. It just works in a slightly more logical way, which is how I like to think about making my node groups. Last one for us to add is going to be the W of our seat. If I go from transfer up socket to W, I can rename this to be seed. One additional thing that I want to do with our linear light fat, if we increase our sliders up to one on either of these, it's unusable. That range that we are using is much too high. Our edge wobble probably only want to be able to go up to 0.3 and equally with our edge blend, either at 0.1 we're doing good, but at 0.4 it's gone. You know, if we have a look at our texture, we've completely obliterated it. Rather than having our sliders go from zero to one, I'm just going to add a converter math and I'm going to change this from add to divide and I'm going to divide by three. So now if I drop this onto our edge wobble, you can see that we hold it over the noodle, that noodle glows white and we can drop that on there. So now rather than it going from zero to one, we're going from zero to a third and we're going to do the exact same. Shift D, hold it over the edge blend till that glows, drop it on there. Now we can see that our edge wobble, our edge blend, are no longer having such an extreme effect. This is one example of a texture that is going to work better with the blend scale turned down because we're getting these patches which look almost like leaves you know if we change the scale now you can see just how many tiles we're actually looking at but as soon as you start it becomes a lot more difficult to actually see those edges if i was to increase the blend scale you can see that with eevee we're getting this nasty blur but if we look into cycles it's actually giving us the correct blend between so you have to think about what platform you're using so if it's cycles then maybe you would like to have a higher blend scale and then you're just going to be able to get that nice blur in between thanks for sticking around i hope this has been interesting this is the method that I use for tiling my textures all the time. I do quite a lot of renders and I use a lot of image textures, even though I mix them with proceduralism in this kind of way. So we can get the most out of a few image textures. Even if you have a very extensive texture library, sometimes you need to be able to make adjustments to large scale tiling. There are other nodes out there that try to hide tiling and you can download them and they're free and they're excellent. But at the same time, if you're going to hide tiling, maybe don't base it around a grid. So this is why I use the Voronoi, but also being able to use any image that you want as a texture regardless of whether or not it's been set up to be seamless if you have a little slider that lets you hide all of the seams then suddenly this opens up a whole load of opportunities for you to be able to use any texture you want at any scale that you want so that's all for me today I hope this has been useful if you know anyone that would appreciate this kind of node group do share it with them if you're wondering where any nodes are that i've mentioned check down in the description below and we'll leave a list of all of the nodes which are included in this material which menu option they are under. There'll also be a screenshot of the nodes so that you can check yours against mine. I'm also going to upload this node group to my Gumroad, so if you do want to download it, that'll be down below. I wouldn't normally do that. I think it's very valuable making your own node groups. I think it's a good learning process, but for this one, I will be putting it out for free. There we go. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one.